So what is the deal with loose skin after bariatric surgery? It's all over the internet. It's on my 600 pound life. There are all these extreme examples posted on the web about massive areas of excess skin and it's a serious patient concern. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio. I've been doing bariatric surgery since 1995 and I've done a bit more than 4,000 bariatric operations so I have seen a lot of loose skin. I'm also married to a plastic surgeon who retired about a year ago but uh, she and I shared a number of massive weight loss cases and a number of body contouring cases and so I'm going to try to speak to the situation about loose skin after bariatric surgery and hopefully allay some fears and concerns that you may have. Now my perception in talking to patients is that most often most people just want to get a practical idea about what their loose skin situation is going to be and how we're going to handle it after they have their gastric sleeve or their gastric bypass. But there's a small subset of patients that it seems to me are actively trying to balance the loose skin as a concern that might stop them from going into the bariatric surgical procedure. And I think that if I speak to that small subset of people and, and try to give them a different perspective about the loose skin, that I'll also provide some information that's useful for the other larger group of people that are just thinking about this from a practical and hopefully prediction perspective. So if you're someone who is actually concerned that bariatric surgery and the weight loss are going to cause a lot of loose excess skin, um, the first perspective that I want to share with you or the different way of looking at it is that the, uh, the loose skin has already happened to you. The loose skin is caused by the stretching of the skin that's caused by the excess weight. And uh, just because your skin is tight right now, it's tight as if it's inflated by this excess fatty tissue, um, does not obviate or does not change the fact that your skin has already been damaged by the weight and that that damage continues as long as the weight persists. So that's one part of a different perspective. Um, I also like patients to think about a uh, balance of pros and cons. And so on the one side, you've got your weight loss surgery, you've got your sleeve, you've got your gastric bypass, you've got your weight loss, and you've got your loose skin. Okay, so that's, that's the loose skin is a downside, no lie. But on the other side of the scale, we've got uh, the things that go with continuing weight, that go without bariatric surgery. Surgery. So what goes along with the weight is you get your tight skin. So you get your skin to be all stretched out, which is you know non-wrinkly. Maybe that's okay. Uh, but you also get the things that go with the weight. You get pain. You get other medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, knee pain, joint pain. You get prejudice against you from the weight. And then you get lower quality of life and you get less length of life, actually. I don't know if you've heard this from me in other contexts, but excess weight, massive excess weight, shortens lifespan in addition to reducing quality of life. And so I, I, I'm not going to tell you which way the scale needs to go in your case, but um, I think for most people, the health benefits of the weight loss surgery uh, outweigh, we'll go this way, outweigh the uh, tightness benefits of keeping the excess weight. The other thing I'll tell you just kind of as a bottom line conclusion is that um, patients who have had the bariatric surgery who are one year out or two years out from surgery basically never say that I would trade that back because the loose skin bothers me so much. They essentially always say in my experience and my partners that I'm so glad that I'm healthier and I feel better and the loose skin is kind of an unfortunate consequence. Again, not caused by the weight loss but caused by damage from the weight that was happening before the surgery was done. And whether or not you find my different perspective convincing, I still think it's useful to go on to some additional conversation about what can we predict for individuals about what their skin is going to look like as they lose massive amounts of weight and what can we do about it. So first of all, some predictions about what it's going to look like. And I need to teach you that um, as the fat tissue begins to melt, as the uh, pressure on the skin diminishes, the skin does have some natural elastic function and the skin will very gradually, slowly, steadily shrink back towards its uh, normal shape. And I want to emphasize the steady and gradual part of this because what happens is that people lose weight very quickly at first in the first three months or six months. It's very brisk weight loss and the skin shrinkage tends to happen on a slower, uh, more gradual slope up until maybe 18 months or 24 months after surgery. So there's kind of a mismatch um, that the weight loss is rapid at first and the weight loss stops at about one year after your bariatric operation. Whereas the skin shrinkage is very slow throughout and it continues up until like I said 18 or 24 months after the surgery and so people uh, who have had bariatric surgery look the most loose or floppy 
or decompressed at about six months after their surgery, and then the situation gets better and better from that point. Now, obviously, different individuals have different levels or different amounts of skin shrinkage, and we can point to several factors that come into play here. Um, age is a big one. Younger age has better elastic, and there's no set break point, but it seems to me that people on the young side of 40 have pretty good skin shrinkage, and people higher than 40, the skin shrinkage starts to fade, and so they end up with a bit more loose skin uh, that does not shrink all the way back from the damage caused by the preoperative weight. Number two, uh, obviously the amount of weight has a lot to do with this. And so many people we meet, thank goodness, are not at the level, the dramatic level of this TV show, My 600 Pound Life, or other things that you may have seen on the internet. And be aware that um, on the internet, it's about fantastic stories and compelling stories. Um, I don't mean fantastic in a wonderful way. I mean fantastic like it's hard to believe fantastic. Um, and these compelling stories are often the extreme end of things. And uh, just as we talk to people about wanting to intervene at an earlier stage for their overall health benefit, uh, we also want to intervene on the weight problem, this obesity condition, and an earlier stage for skin benefit because the, the less size you have going in, the less damage or stretching you have in your skin and the more normal you will be later on. Okay. So big factor number one is age. Big factor number two is the absolute excess weight that that person may carry. The third factor is how is the weight distributed? And people come with many different weight distributions. Some people have it all in the middle of their body. Some people have it just on their hips and their thighs. Some people have it um, you know, throughout the body. And then people have also distributions about internal fat and external fat. All these things um, come into play in terms of how the skin shrinks back over time. And then the last factor that I think is pretty important is whether you have been a smoker in the past or not. Um, the nicotine involved with cigarette smoking or any kind of tobacco use does damage the elastic function of the skin. And so people who have a significant smoking history have less elastic and less ability for the skin to shrink back. But let me... The fifth factor that's often mentioned in the skin shrinkage equation is exercise. And exercise is widely recommended to assist with skin shrinkage. I'm asked about this very often and I would love to tell you that yes, exercise will make your skin shrink better. I don't really think so. Um, I think, to be honest, that the amount of skin that is going to shrink or the amount of skin shrinkage that you're going to have is just your genetics and the other factors that we talked about, you know, your age, your smoking, your weight distribution. Um, and I think exercise is fantastic. In fact, I'm tempted to tell people that exercise does help skin shrinkage, but I think that exercise is good for your overall weight control. I think it's good for your health. I think there is a sense in which exercise and more muscle mass will fill in your skin envelope in a more healthy way. But um, I think that the amount of elastic that your skin has and that steady, slow, even trajectory of skin shrinkage is just going to happen um, more or less regardless of the exercise that you do. Now that gradual skin shrinkage does still mean that even once your weight is stable on the scale that your shape will continue to improve. Your skin shrinks in a little bit, your muscle mass comes back a little bit, and so your shape and the fit of your clothing will continue to get better. Um, and I really want you to exercise. But I don't think ex exercise directly causes skin to shrink. And so what I often find myself saying to people in practical terms as we sit together in the office is, look, granted, you're not going to be ready to go on the cover of Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue a year after your surgery. But still, in clothes, you're going to be fine. You're going to be looking normal, you'll feel normal, and you'll be treated in a normal way. Having said that, there can be some loose areas that kind of bother you. There may be some sagging of the belly, um, the butt the boobs, and then maybe the arms as well. And so these areas, if they bother you, we start talking about plastic surgery for skin removal. Now, plastic surgery is very rewarding and very appropriate for people who have gotten to an appropriate time frame after their bariatric surgery. Personally, I like people to wait until about 18 months after their bariatric operation so that, number one, they're fully recovered from a nutritional strength systemic perspective and also so that the skin gets to be more or less into the shape that it's going to end up and that makes the plastic surgery more um, effective and more efficient. So um, meet with a plastic surgeon by all means at six months or 12 months after your surgery and that will give you some time to plan ahead for your plastic surgical procedure. 
One unfortunate piece, at least in uh, 2020, is that plastic surgery is rarely covered by insurance. And as a bariatric surgeon, I find this a bit offensive. I think that doing plastic surgery to remove that excess skin should be categorized as a reconstructive procedure, which means covered by insurance, uh, like breast cancer reconstruction. But uh, today, the insurance companies are very firm in claiming that, no, this is a cosmetic procedure, and uh, they refuse to cover it, except in a few circumstances. Um, the few circumstances where insurance may, may be uh, providing some coverage are in cases of severe irritation underneath this uh, skin flap that's called the panis, um, and that irritation has the medical name of intertrigo, um, or if there is a special nerve condition where there's numbness on your thigh that's called neuralgia parasthetica. Now about the insurance process, your bariatric surgeon and the bariatric team are not the ones that are going to handle insurance for your plastic surgery. That will be with the plastic surgery office. And just like your bariatric surgeons are expert in getting coverage for the bariatric surgery that you need, the plastic surgeons will be expert in assessing whether there's any potential for you to have your plastic surgery covered. Um, and if not, we'll let you know and discuss what are your cash pay options. In my experience, probably only about one quarter of patients would even want to go on to plastic surgery. And of those, about half go on to have plastic surgery. And those folks are very happy. They find it to be a very positive um, additional intervention after their bariatric operation to get back to fully normal. And as you know, I'm not a plastic surgeon, but I've seen a fair amount of plastic surgery and I'm married to one. So I'm gonna say a little bit about what to expect when you go for your plastic surgery consultation. Typically, the plastic surgery process is a multiple step process. Uh, the plastic surgeon will very often start with the center of your body. That might be the belly and the boobs and maybe working on the arms. Um, and then go to the butt and the, and the legs. And um, surgeons have very different perspectives about how much surgery should be taken on in one step. I definitely recommend that you respect your plastic surgeon's opinion and what they're comfortable with and uh, work with them on that process. It is very common to plan a second step or a third step and do some nip and tuck and some tweaks that come along. And one other thing I want to share with you as you learn about plastic surgery and, and talk to plastic surgeons is that uh, when we're talking about skin removal for excess skin after massive weight loss, uh, there is this dictum or this guideline that longer incisions lead to better results. And that's tricky because um, as patients and also as plastic surgeons, um, there's a desire to have shorter incisions or hidden incisions. And um, whereas that's nice for a lot of plastic surgical interventions, again, it doesn't work as well for uh, massive weight loss and skin removal. Um, I'll just use arms for an example. So um, it's common for folks after massive weight loss to have kind of floppy arm tissue here, uh, what you might call bat wings. And um, a minimal incision approach would be to just uh, work in the arm armpit or the axilla to try to um, pull that skin in and shrink it up, but that doesn't take care of the floppiness that's all along the arm. And so the arm, uh, it, to get the best results if it's really floppy, is to start here um, and work all the way back up and then work also into the axilla or the armpit to get that skin to shrink down comfortably. You could apply the same principles to the belly where we need to go all across the front or sometimes even all the way around. You can apply the same idea to the breasts where you need to do actually significant, sometimes T-shaped incisions to get the breast lifted up. Um, often there will be implants, not always. Um, and one other common area of concern is the legs and the thighs. And I will just tell you that um, those areas are very tricky to operate, both in terms of um, getting good results and in terms of a higher level of complications on the thighs. And so um, if your plastic surgeon is advising against that, uh, I will tell you that's probably for a good reason. Okay, so hopefully this has given you a better perspective on the issue of loose skin after massive weight loss. I hope it's something that uh, you can feel a bit more comfortable with. Um, it's very much an individualized uh, prediction that you and your bariatric surgeon can work on about what's your particular skin situation going to be, uh, but it's definitely a conversation that we're open to having.